Good morning. Our theme today, Wind Upon the Water. And this week has been and continues to be a week full of fear, uncertainty, and very distressing activity in our country, both politically and uh, medically. And I've felt a lot of anxiety, as I'm sure most of you have, um, as I've watched news unfold in our nation's capital. And when I feel that anxiety, I often turn to the scriptures and especially to my favorite set of Bible verses, um, which comfort me. And I've chosen to use that as my scripture for today. And that is Ecclesiastics 3, 1 through 12. There's a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens, a time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant and a time to uproot, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to scatter stones and a time to gather them, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to search and a time to give up, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to mend, a time to be silent and a time to speak, a time of love and a time of hate, a time of war and a time of peace. What do workers gain from their toil? I've seen the burden God has laid on the human race and he has made everything beautiful in its time. He's also set eternity in the heaven, human heart, yet no one can fathom what God has done from beginning to end. I know there is nothing better for people than to be happy and do good while they live. I'm going to give a little uh, advertisement here, uh, sort of. I must say that on Wednesday night's Zoom prayer meeting uh, this past week, that it was a great comfort to those of us who uh, participated. As the reality of the day's happenings unfolded on TV, uh, we gathered and we discussed, we prayed, we laughed, and we learned how to cook butternut squash to perfection in a crock pot. I believe there were 10 of us signed in, and I believe that we were all blessed, calmed, and uplifted by the Spirit of God and the fellowship that we shared. And if you would consider joining us uh, in future Zoom Wednesday evenings at 7, we'd really love to have you. For our time together today, um, actually, Ron and I <clears throat> must have our minds in the same plateau. Uh, because I, with everything that has gone on, I decided to kind of take us on an imaginary walk today through the woods. And as we begin our walk, I'd like you to imagine yourself walking through the woods down a path, enjoying the beauty of God's creation and allow it to touch your troubled soul. I want you to enjoy the different shades of green in the plants and the vines along the path and the delicate wildflowers and the sights and smells. Soon we come to a babbling brook with maybe a small waterfall feeding it from upstream and a shallow pool at your feet. You notice a nice flat rock beside the stream and you choose to sit, kick off your shoes so you can dangle your feet in the cool, clear flowing water. As you sit there listening to the soft gurgling of the water, hear the birds fluttering through the trees and calling to their mate, mates. You notice the sunlight streaming through the canopy above. How can you help but be in that moment without uttering a prayer in your heart, thanking God for the beauty of his creation and the opportunity you experience the sights, sounds, and smells that surround you? John 8, 12 says, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have light of life. After a while of sitting and contemplating your many blessings, you put your shoes back on and continue on your journey. As you walk in an unfamiliar part of the forest, you may contemplate all that has happened throughout this past year. 
Perhaps you had lost friends or loved ones to the pandemic or suffered a bad case yourself. And again, the familiar verses come to mind from Psalms 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his namesake. And even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. You continue on your way, and as you come to the edge of the forest, there in front of you is a rather large lake. The water is calm and glistening in the sun. Occasionally, it's, the surface is broken by a dragonfly briefly touching the water or fish rising to snatch an unfortunate bug floating on the surface. You wish you had your fishing pole. As you approach the water's edge, you peer in to see your reflection and it gives you an opportunity to think about where you are in life, who you are, what you believe in, what you wanna be. The surface is so smooth and calm that you pick up a small pebble and drop it into the water and watch as the rings form and spread wider and wider. Perhaps they connect with another ring caused by a bug or that dragonfly. And you consider that everything that you say and do has the potential to affect others. And you also realize that the others may cause change in your life as well. Psalms 107, eight through nine says, Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. For he satisfieth the longing soul and filleth the hungry soul with goodness. Then you notice a couple of perfectly round flat stones at your feet, the kinds of stone just perfect for skipping. You pull back your arm and let the first one fly. It skips three, four times, and then it sinks. The next one does much better after you've kind of got your arm lined up. It skips six, seven, eight, nine times before it too sinks into the deep water. Perhaps you relate the actions of the stones on the water to your life and unknown future. What skips, changes, ups and downs lie ahead of your journey through life? Will there where will future challenges, uncertainty, successes, and even failures lead you as you tread through the waters of life? This past year has been a year filled with things that none of us started out the year expecting. We've all been challenged again and again. We started the year with the joy and excitement of the Chiefs winning the Super Bowl, followed by the fear and uncertainty and tragedy of the pandemic. Closing of schools, stores, restaurants, churches, everything we'd taken for granted changed our lives in, as well. Doctors, nurses, other health professionals were and are challenged to their limits and beyond as scientists and researchers the world over race to find a vaccine that may slow or stop the virus. Grandparents shut off from their grandchildren, sons and daughters, families separated in ways never imagined in our lifetimes, having to visit families in nursing homes through a window and not be able to touch. People suddenly working at home or not working at all and forced to stay in their homes have led to additional tensions and hardships in family lives. The winds on our water have suddenly turned into a storm. Thanks to the internet, ingenuity, and programs such as Zoom, we've learned to work, attend meetings, conduct business, teach our children and meet for church on our phones and computers. It's not what we want, but it is something and it's a blessing. It's the best we can do for the time to keep in touch and to keep each other safe. 
The storm on our lake calms, but does not stop. God tells us he's with us always, and he's so badly needed in our lives. It is, a, it is a time for every season under heaven. We're reminded the story of Matthew 14, of feeding them, Jesus feeding the multitude. And then he sent his disciples out in the, sh in the boat as he had some time alone on the mountain. Then as the storm raised, Jesus walked on the storm-tossed water toward the ship, carrying his disciples. And Peter called out to him. Jesus called back to Peter to have faith and walk out on the water to greet him, which Peter succeeded until his faith faltered and he began to sink. Jesus reached out, rescued him. When they reached the ship, the waters calmed. We're also reminded of the Old Testament story of Moses and the Israelites when God parted the waters so that they could cross, then released the waters to swallow up their enemies. On their journey, God supplied water, food to sustain them in the desert, a time for every purpose under heaven. Today, we're in uncertain times again. COVID continues to rage around the world. We have friends and families on the front lines, doctors, nurses, therapists, teachers, and many other frontline workers who must face every day, and we pray for them. And now our politics have erupted into uncertainty and even violence. Yes, this past year has been a huge challenge. The waters have been rough and the winds continue to blow. And we hold on to Jesus' promise in John 14, 1. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. And in John 14, 18, he says, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come for it to you. Because of our faith, in God, we know that the winds will die down, the waters will calm and clear once again. We continue to pray, we continue to uphold each other in love and care as we continue our journey down the path that God leads us, a time for every purpose under heaven. God, where will your spirit lead today? Help me to be fully awake and ready to respond. Grant me courage to risk something new and become a blessing of your love and peace. Amen. My prayer for each of you is that you will be blessed with a deep and enduring comfort and peace in the days ahead. Thank you.